Good morning <clears throat> and welcome. This is the third Sunday of Easter, April 26th, 2020. I'm John Mockholds, Bishop of the Upstate New York City, and I'm delighted to be with you this morning as we spend some time together focusing on God's Word and in prayer. I'd like to share with you this morning a portion of the Gospel appointed for this day in the Revised Common Lectionary. It is the Emmaus Road story that is used both on the Easter evening liturgy lectionary and on this third Sunday. A story that I hope is familiar to most of us. I'm going to share a portion of it with you. Now on that same day when Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but kept their eyes from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders turned him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. This is the Gospel of our Lord. This Emmaus story, this Gospel appointed for this third Sunday of Easter, is at its core a story of journey. In its simplest form, it is a walk along a road. Yet what happens on that road makes all the difference in the world as it leads three apparent strangers to a place of intimate companionship where they gathered around a table following a simple invitation. At that table, bread is broken, eyes are opened, and Christ's resurrected presence is revealed to Cleopas and his companion. As I thought about that, I began to think of other road stories, or should I say songs about road stories and the road. Leaping first to mind was Willie Nelson's On the Road Again. Or perhaps you'll recall the Beatles' The Long and Winding Road. Maybe you're a fan of Sheryl Crow, who sang, Every Day is a Winding Road, or perhaps you've been following the Grateful Dead for decades, and remember their song, Truckin'. And that's just a few of them. 
Whatever your choice, however silly this sounds, these songs sing about roads and journeys of life. But to be completely honest, the first thing that leapt to mind in the early morning hours as I was contemplating this text was not a song, but a poem by one of America's greatest poets, Robert Frost. It's called The Road Not Taken. Listen with me for a moment, if you will. Frost writes, Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The road to Emmaus made all the difference in the lives of Cleopas and his companion as they encountered the risen Christ who taught and cajoled and confided in them that he was the one that they had hoped for. Showing himself in the breaking of bread at their table, their lives were changed inextricably as they recalled their hearts burning within them on that road as he opened the scripture to them and reminded them of what they already knew. Their joy was complete as they came to the realization that they had met on the road the one who was to save Israel. There have been times in my life when I've taken a road, and perhaps a wrong one, sometimes intentionally, sometimes inadvertently. I, like many, have made the wrong turn down an unknown road and gotten lost. And I've done that from time to time, even when I've been following the GPS that directs me to my destination. It doesn't happen often, but it's happened once or twice where I've entered areas where GPS does not work well or roads are named something different than the address I've been given or found on the internet. It's rare, but it does happen. I've also found sometimes I've also sometimes taken the wrong road when given a choice, a road that has led me to places that I really didn't want to be once I arrived at the destination. I found myself in circumstances that did not make sense, went against my core values, and disrupted my life and journey. Sometimes those wrong turns down the wrong road had serious consequences. Other times, the mistake was easily remedied. At each of those moments and times when I wound up where I didn't want to be, I may not have realized it immediately, but Christ was with me, offering companionship and forgiveness, prompting me in the right direction, and walking beside me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hindsight is always twenty twenty, and you know as I do, that it's not always easy to discern the presence of the risen Christ at times and in places we have found ourselves. Yet he has been there and is with us now. Christ comes to lead us down another road, a road filled with compassion and mercy and forgiveness, a road of hope and promise and great expectation, a road that directs us toward the presence of the living God who created and redeemed and sanctified us in faith and in life. And that, my sisters and brothers in Christ, has made all the difference in my life 
and in yours. When we go down the wrong road, Christ comes to us and turns us around to head us in the right direction. When we wander off the path and follow the directions of others to our detriment, Christ comes to us to forgive us and nudge us to that path that brings life. When we take a wrong turn and find ourselves in a darkness of sin and shortcomings, this same Jesus takes us by the hand and guides us to greener pastures and a renewal of life. As you move through the hours of this day and the week to come and choose which road to follow, may these words of St. Patrick guide you, comfort you, encourage you, and be your prayer, knowing that Christ is with you, even if you head down the wrong road. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. In these days to come, may you be filled with the presence of that risen Christ. May he bring you peace and continue to guide your life of faith as you seek his presence. Know that he is with you. Peace. Let us pray. Gracious and Holy One, we give you thanks that you accompany us on our journeys of life, on the roads that we take, on the direction in which we head. When we grow astray, bring us back to your presence. When we wander and get lost, find us and renew in us our hope and our confidence. Be with us in the hours of this day as we celebrate your resurrection presence and give thanks for a new life which is yours and ours in your death and resurrection for the sake of this world. Amen.